I'm Device from Astralis and welcome to Foran's YouTube channel. It's a joke free zone. Right, this is going to be another episode of Talk to Thorin, and I'm joined by Plopsky, who was obviously most famously known for his time in Ninjas in Pyjamas, NIP, but is now in Godsent, and we'll obviously get into all of that in the interview, Plopsky. So actually, at the outset, I'll just ask you this question. It's actually something I was just asking you before we started, which is, even though you've been around quite a few years, you've been in NIP, and not only that, you were in the NIP that had like Get Right in Forest and like the famous ones, etc. I feel like yeah. people don't know you in the community. They, they, just can't, they just know you as a Swedish player on NIP. Do you have a similar sense of yourself yeah well i think that the uh, i think that makes sense because i joined nip when i was uh, pretty young like i just turned 17 and uh, i played there for like almost four years i think it is so it was basically like my whole career um so i think that's why everyone just like connects me to nip whenever they they think about my name because i don't really think that people know about my previous teams before that like i played for some spanish teams and yes. stuff like that so i don't think uh, people know that much about that but uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've played in NIP for a long time. And also one thing that happens a lot is that people think I'm like way older than I am because sure. I've been playing for a little bit like longer time, you know? So like, you know, whenever I wrote on Twitter, like, oh, I just turned 19 or 20. And they're like, well, you're so young. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if people don't know it, you're only 21 now. Yeah, exactly. Still pretty young. Okay. As you say, I actually did want to start there. When I was looking up some of the old stuff, I thought like... Oh, this when it says existence, that must just be like they had a Swedish lineup or something. I clicked it. It's like there's two Swedish players and three Spanish players. If people don't know, one of them seemed like a famous one, that guy flipping, who everyone knows yeah. from the Spanish team. How do you end up playing in a Spanish team? I'm assuming at this point in time you must be like fifteen or something. Yeah, well, it's kind of a funny story because um I mean I started off playing uh, some like Swedish qualifiers with some of my friends. And then like accidentally one of the guys in existence he saw my name on HL TV. I think it was like my first Asian TV game and I have a Spanish surname it's Gonzalez Zamora right. because my dad is from Spain uh, so he saw that and he thought uh, oh he's from Spain and then he like looked up like he scouted me on Face It I think even uh, and saw like my stats and stuff like that there because I didn't have much to go on Asian TV I played like two games or something and they're like oh, you want to try play with us and yeah as you said I just turned 15 uh, like I was still in school and uh, but I was super excited. Uh, at that point, it was me and four sp uh, Spaniards. So, oh, right. That, that was just you. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Do you actually speak Spanish? <laughs> the funny thing is, no, I don't. So, but were they speaking yeah, Spanish and you're just not understanding? No, I mean, I like I kind of understand a little bit, uh, but I don't speak it that much myself. So it was kind of like a, a mix between them speaking Spanish, but uh, me speaking English to them. And then obviously, like, they also spoke English too, but like all the basic information where people are or like how many there are there and whatever like that i i can understand that uh so that's how we that's how we went with it and uh my dad he, he speaks spanish fluently so he, he helped me to you know understand uh, and taught me some stuff to learn quicker right. and uh we were in spain a lot so i kind of got the hang of it a little bit quicker the other Swedish guy is someone who people might not know because he didn't go to the top level, this guy Rusty. But it seems like he played in a bunch of teams with you. So who was this guy? Was he a friend of yours at the time? Uh, me and Rusty, I mean, we got to know each other first. Like, it was a while ago in uh, a Face It hub called Swedish Pro League. And uh, that's where I got to know, like, Hampus and Rusty and right. all of those, like, Brolan too and stuff like that. Uh, so I started playing with them there. And, like, the first time I played SPL... People always told me, like, you know, like Rusty and Hampus and those guys, they were like kind of in their own gang. And like people were like, yeah, they're, they're kind of, people are kind of scared of them because like they wanted to impress them because they were like, like a little bit higher up, uh, if you can say so. And, uh, you know, so I was like, well, I want to get friends with these guys. So I just uh, started playing with them and I think they were quite impressed about, uh, about how I was playing. Um, so I got to know them better and started uh, to be friends with them. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think me and Rusty have played in like three different lineups with each other in Singularity, Ancient, and now in Godsent. Um, so I, I've known him for a long time. The same goes for like Hampus and Brolin. I mean, basically all the Swedish players I've played with. Right. And then I saw after this, another person who was in a bunch of your teams, he was in Singularity, Barba, the old 1.6 player. If people don't use that to be an opera in 1.6, believe it or not. And then obviously at this point, he was like a team captain. And then he was in Existence Galaxy. And later he was even your coach in the H team, right? So yeah. did this guy have an impact on your career? What was it like to play with him? Uh, I would definitely say that he had an impact on my career. He was uh, kind of the first like real IGL I had at that time. Uh, I think it was in Singularity I played with him the first time. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, he was kind of like that leader, but uh, I, he taught me a lot. And uh, he also taught me how to see the game a little bit differently. But we didn't play with each other for that long. Uh, but then afterwards, he... like So the thing was, I was playing with the assistants, the Spain, Spaniards. And then they like kind of took a break from that team. So then they loaned me out to Singularity, which uh, was where Barbara and Rusty was playing. And then, so I played with them for like a month or two, or maybe even longer, I don't know. And then I came back to Existence, and we they wanted to create a Swedish project. So we created a Swedish project uh, with uh, Barbar, and also Nock. So I played with Nock a long time ago, too. Um, but then I think it was in uh, Existence Galaxy where he taught me the most. And also the the first time I kind of have had a lot of uh, fun, because we were like playing at a better level. We qualified for DreamHack uh, Winter, I think, and we came to the semifinals, something like yeah. that. So that was like my first real like LAN tournament and first like experience at a higher level. And uh, it was really fun to, to be able to have it with them because that's those guys that taught me the most at that time. By the way, when you go for your first like pro LAN to a dream hack, that's going to just be cool in itself, right? You come from the Swedish scene. Like, that's it's, it's, it's the stuff you're thinking of with all Get Right and all the rest of the old players, right? Surely. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like like playing my first LAN and... You know, being able to qualify, like we weren't a big team at that point in Existence Galaxy. Like before we qualified that tournament, I don't think we were like that good ranked. Like sure, we played some online stuff and like even the qualifier, it was looking pretty rough for us. But then we managed to win like versus LDLC, which was like ranked 12 at that point because they just came from Cologne or something where they oh, came nice. semifinals, something like that. They came nice. far in one of the big tournaments. So we won against them to qualify, I think it was. And we were like so hyped up and that like momentum we got from that. Afterwards, after that qualifier is where we like kind of skyrocketed a little bit because we got so much momentum and everyone was just feeling so confident. So I think that helped us a lot. And uh, well, sadly, afterwards, the, like after DreamHack, uh, Existence didn't have enough funds to continue. So we had to like split our separate ways. But it was definitely like a fun first experience. So as you say, you actually got to play with Nork all the way back then, and he himself has just sort of blossomed in the last couple of years, actually, fully enough, after NIP. And one thing I noticed that Hamper said, and I actually think it applies to more than just you, is I actually think that, like, 2020 lineup of NIP, just to skip forward a little bit in the story, I actually think that lineup that, like, I don't know who put it together, whether it was Threat or whoever it was, where it was all the youngsters, mate, that should have been the true academy team, because, like, those players were really good. It's just not yet. They hadn't got the chance yet. And the problem is it feels like you were just thrown into tier one. One, right yeah i mean i know that the like hampus said that the, he think it was too early for me to join nip when i when it was and like it kind of makes sense but uh, i don't think it was too early what i think was a little bit unfortunate is that when i joined like shortly after both forest and get right uh, left so like both of the legends and the most experienced ones left i think if they were in the, uh, the team for a little bit longer and i could have like learned more from them right i think it would have benefited me more uh, than when like when they left which is kind of unfortunate because yeah so i don't think i joined too early i just think that it was kind of unfortunate that they left sure too early maybe if you can say sure. so who was knock back then all those years ago was he like he is now I mean, to me, like when we got knock, like it was kind of, uh, it was kind of a funny story because we like we wanted an opera, right? And uh, we, I think we tested out some players, and then we heard about knock, and like at that point he had like really shit internet. He just got kicked from a team because he kept lagging or something like that. <laughs> okay. And uh, how, did, how does kind of... someone in Sweden manage to have bad internet? By the way, how is that even I possible? Know. I think it was actually okay. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe someone could correct me on this, but I think it was the team he was playing with Hampus and. Stuff oh, like okay. that. He was playing in a team with right. them back then, and I think he got kicked because he lagged too much. But okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> but but it was a team like that, and well, we wanted to try him out because he looked promising. And uh, oh well, he was he was fucking promising. Like uh, the the first couple of days we played, he didn't do that well because he felt like he was being he was like afraid to do mistakes. And I think me me my dad and like Barber told him to like, you know, if you're gonna be afraid to make mistakes, then you're not gonna get anywhere. Like you have to be able to. Do mistakes to improve or like don't be afraid you know and like after that he he skyrocketed like he i think he's one of the most uh, talented players i've played with to this day and back then like he carried uh like he carried us a lot um he was like he was really on like onward to being one of the the best upcoming swedish players and uh yeah it was really nice to getting to play with him and uh Obviously, like when we got the chance to play with him in NIP as well, I got really happy. Even though it might have not 
been under the best circumstances because we took him in as sure. a lurker, which was kind of, <laughs> yeah, not not the best maybe. Even though it maybe worked out, but I think like he, he's much better with AWP than his sure. lurker. So. By the way, one thing, since you keep referencing your dad, that's one thing I, I wasn't actually aware of that detail. So you seem very Swedish to me, like quite reserved, you know, very polite. You, you haven't gone out your way to make big statements. Is there not that Spanish side in there? Normally they're pretty fiery Spaniards. You know, they're sort of like they, they love to rant and stuff, you know? Uh, I mean, not really. I think, uh, I mean, a, a little bit more like now than before, but I've always been kind of like a, like drawn back kind of guy, like just uh, like chilling. I don't really care about that many stuff like uh i'm just like doing my own thing kind of and uh not too out uh like how do you say it i don't do too many like statements publicly and stuff sure. like that um uh, i just tend to keep uh, stuff for myself which also we could talk about that later but it's also like been hurting my career in some ah, ways right sure Right. After this, you went into the ancient team, which if people don't know, I immediately recognize this call. This used to be the old Epsilon team, if people remember. These were the people who got their chance to go up. And at this point, they had to come back down again. So Draken obviously was in an IP. Disco Doppler was in Fnatic. People forget he went to a major. He was in like the playoffs. Obviously, Freddie B was the guy who always got left behind. And then you had Barbar as your coach. So it's like, like these are like experienced players. What was this team like to join? I mean... Uh... It was a it was a really nice team. Um, before that team, I played uh, I played with Pronex, and uh, we were also called uh, like we were soon to be gods and something like that. Right. Because Pronex was still like one of the owners. It's before you got the name had. or something like yeah. 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 Uh, so I played with Pronex and also Disco Doplan and uh, two others. Uh, and then we we played like one like uh, Copenhagen Bioc qualifier or something right. like that. And, uh, well, we didn't qualify, but then after that, uh, I think it was 30B who wrote to me on like Steam. He was just like, well, I'm, I want to create a Swedish project. Are you interested? And uh, he, he actually asked that before the tournament, and I said no, uh, because I, I really believed in the, the okay. team I was doing with Pro I mean, Next. to be fair, being in Prolex is pretty cool. He's a legendary guy, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's what I, I was like also thinking, like, coming up. And, well, after we played a couple tournaments and stuff like that... Uh, I told Freddy B after the tournament, I was like, um, yeah, I mean, we, we can try. And they also wanted Disco Doplan. So I talked to Disco Doplan and we were both agreeing that we wanted to go to that project. So, and I think it was like now afterwards, it was better because I think it was just a better team overall, like uh, playing with Disco Doplan, Freddy B, Draken and uh, Rusty and having Barbara's coach, who was, as you said, experienced players. And uh, I still wasn't that experienced. So I learned a lot and they also set me up to be more of a, uh, star player if you say so right and that's where i kind of got my first uh taste of uh i don't know what to say blood maybe but like okay. i was really hungry to to win you know and really hungry to shine and uh, i think it wasn't that that much long like after that i only played there for like two months or something yeah, before yeah. i got picked up by an ip Right. Obviously, I do understand you aren't Hampus and I can't just open with a question and get an insane story necessarily. But I'll ask it anyway, since you played with them. I actually always thought those two players specifically, Disco Doplin and Draken, had a very strange career because I actually watched them when they were in that Epsilon team, mate. And if, if people don't know, that was actually back when that we had such an enormous circuit. You could do stuff like just go to tournaments in China all the time and win like $50,000 and go to all the DreamHack Open. And there was loads of tournaments to play. And I could tell from watching them, like, these are good players, mate. There's no way this is a fluke like like the disco doppler guy was like a sort of skilled rifler if people don't know like headshot him and draken actually was a, like a really good opera he actually really good yep. and i think when you watch them go to the higher level so sort of their skills weren't there but i don't know this is what i'm gonna ask you something happened to them so, so some reason they couldn't do at that level what you would people would have expected they'd take that next step up like the joking even though people made that meme about draken for example like he you know he can only hit like the night yeah. yeah but he was actually insane at those shots it's just bizarre that i even think that almost implies i don't know was he nervous or something because the, the easy ones are the easy ones. He was hitting the hard ones. Who are these guys? Because it's clearly not that they're shit players, right? No, I mean, I played with uh, Draken many times, or not many times, but I played with him like now in Godsend 2 when we started a lineup. And uh, well, I think the thing with Draken is that his uh, problem is not in game, it's outside of the game. Uh, like his uh, ability to kind of be tilt and, uh, right. you know, maybe saying stuff that he shouldn't say. I think that's what. Uh, annoys the teammates the most and uh i mean i think he he has obviously came a long way since i played with him in ancient and when i played with him in godsend uh, because in ancient like we knew that he had his 
problems, if you say so, that uh, like he 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 can tilt and stuff like that. But Barbar also had a very good understanding. Like he knew he knew Draken as well, so he like he knew how to control him in that way. Like he he was not allowed to tilt under Barbar's uh, leadership, so that was kind of good. But uh, I think in the end, it's still the Draken's tilting that uh, is keeping him away from being in teams. Uh, I think I can say that. But uh, I think he's a really skilled player. He just has some some tilting problems, and uh, he's gotten a lot better. Uh, right now, I don't know how he is. I think he's better because you have to get better if you if you want to continue. And for Disco Doplan, I'm not quite sure. I feel like he he was a very he didn't really talk that much. He I think that's what uh, I think that's what like maybe hurt him because like he didn't demand much. He didn't say that much. He was kind of just like in his house playing video games all day i think uh, okay. i'm not quite sure but uh, that's what the vibe i got from him nice. like he didn't do that much you know and uh, i think maybe that's what like maybe he just didn't want it that uh, that much in the end because like after the ancient line i think he just disappeared and like, then you know, obviously this team was the one that went to dreamhack summer and you can't come second this time and this was the one where you lost to msls and configs and optic teams so it was actually like some veteran players that people might know it looks like you did pretty well in this tournament um yeah i mean it was uh the thing is that before that tournament i got the the uh, contract from nip or not contract but they they told me that they were interested in me and uh, I basically knew I was going to join NMP before the tournament, but I only told Barbar because I didn't want to tell the players so it wouldn't affect them. But uh, it affected me because I knew, like, the better we were playing, the more it, like, kind of hurt from me because oh, I knew I was like, going to leave them, you, you know? Guilty. Yeah, I felt guilty because, like, now we're, like, playing our best CS. I'm like, damn, I'm about nice. to leave them now, you know? So it kind of hurt me. And, like, yeah, we came to the final and we had a good shot of winning it too. Like I want, I really wanted to win for them because they would qualify to Dream Act Malmo. I think it was like the first place uh, thing. Right. And so I really wanted to win, but obviously I also thought about like, I it kind of was in the back of my head that I'm gonna leave them, so it kind of affected a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think afterwards when I told them, I don't think they were that happy. All right, I know they weren't that happy because like. Draken said something on stream about me one time, but like now we're now we're good friends. Sure. But you know, I learned afterwards that they weren't that happy about it. But I think like anyone would have taken that offer. Like, why wouldn't you? Like NMP was the my favorite team and the sure. team I looked up to, so I would take that any day. The thing that's crazy is, as you say, not only were you very young, like 17 when he got this offer, but if people think about what we just talked about, in the same year he's talking about that he gets picked up to NIP was when just earlier in the year he's failing to qualify through a bring-your-own-computer tournament in Copenhagen, like, and I assume driving over or taking a flight or something. Like, that's a yeah. pretty crazy, like, jump right up to the... Like, because remember, the first event, you're just straight in the ESL cologne, like, what the fuck? You're, like, in the Lanxess Arena. That, that's going to be crazy, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think that NMP kind of fucked up a little bit when they picked me up. Uh, like, I think it was it was good that they picked me up, but I think the timing of it was kind of fucked up because we just qualified for the minor or the RMR or whatever it was called back then with uh, Ancient, right? So because I qualified with Ancient, I wasn't allowed to play with NIP in oh, the major. Right. Right. So they had to play with a stand-in. And uh, they took Golden as a stand-in. And obviously, Golden, you know, well-known like IGL leader, but they didn't make him the IGL. So <laughs> right. they just they took in like one of the greatest IGLs in Sweden and made him not IGL. Uh, and I was like, um, okay, uh, I, I, I couldn't say much because yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't dare. Uh, okay. But I was just thinking like, what the fuck is happening? And well, they didn't do good. I think they, they lost every game, and they they needed to win one game to stay until the next major or something like that. And they couldn't do that. They lost against MIBR, who played with Coach as well. Right. So it was kind of a disaster <laughs> in that sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think if they they would have if they maybe just waited a little bit and played with Dennis, that uh, the one guy <coughs> replaced, maybe they could have uh, kept the spot or whatever. I don't know. But uh, in that sense, they they kind of fucked up. And then I wasn't allowed to play with Ancient either because, I mean, they didn't want to play with me, of course, because I left them. So then I was just like kind of in a break for like two or three months or something. And that kind of sucked, like kind of broke my momentum in some way. If you join a team that's got Get Right and Forest, that's already pretty cool. But if already your Swedish and NIP was your favorite team, like if you even just walk in the door the first day and they're there in the in the boot camp or wherever it was in Fern Oval Island, I don't know if it's the offices or what. What's it like? What's, what does it feel like when you walk in and, you just, and your teammate are theirs? I mean, like I remember when I got the call that my agent told me that NIP wanted me. I remember like I was sleeping and he called me and 
he told me yeah, NAP wants you. And then, I mean, afterwards I couldn't sleep because I was so excited. And, uh, you know, as I said, NAP has been the one team I looked up to uh, ever since 2014 when they like won the major or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, that's like when I, I kind of knew like, okay, I want to go pro, like this seems fun. And then I just started following NAP and like all the matches. And I told myself that I want to be in NAP one day. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously looking up to Get Right Forest and all of those players back then and getting to have a chance to play with Forest and Get Right, uh, it was an honor and uh, it was a really great experience. Like I, I think I only played with them like not that long, but I learned so much from those two because like they have, they have as much experience as I was, uh, as my age, you know. Sure, when I sure. They, yeah. they started playing when I was born, basically. True. What so, about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go on, keep going. No, no. You, you oh, don't. all good. Yeah, right. Um, what about uh, when you join a team like that? I know this is the end of when they're a team, so I want to actually see what it was like in that sense. But in the early days, when they started to break up their classic lineup, it was famous that that fifth spot was like the dreaded spot. It may as well have had a trap door below it, you know, because like whoever went to that spot got the worst positions. Like the joke would be in the modern day, you'd be like the B anchor on Mirage would be. Everyone knows that's like the dreaded spot on CT, sir. You get all the worst spots. They have their spots because they're the legends. And then it's it's hard if you're the one coming in because everyone's looking at your stats and it's going, did they do this to you? Did they give you room? What, what was it like when they brought you in the team? Uh, well, at that point, it was Peter who was coach. And uh, he told, uh, or he, he asked me what positions I prefer. And I wrote like all my positions that I, that I want. And I got some of them. So that was nice. I think that was a thing they wanted to change because I think bringing in a young guy that's, been like shining a lot and then just putting him into shit positions would just like kind of ruin him you know that's yes. what i was thinking at least so bringing him in and letting him do his thing i think was the the good thing that they did this time and that's what they did with me they they gave me like not all the positions i asked for because i mean some positions maybe people are comfortable in but they gave me most of the ones I wanted. And uh, I think the first tournament I played with them was, as you said, Cologne. And we qualified to Langs' Arena and I get to play in front of like 18,000 people. Uh, I didn't do that well that tournament because I, I think I was a little bit too nervous. I shit the bed kind of. Uh, Understandably. After that, <laughs> yeah, after that, I, I think I actually, I think I played better there than I did uh, like in my previous teams. I feel like I kind of evolved. Uh, like just looking at my stats back then, I think I, I that was the best CS I played uh, at that point, and uh, I felt like it was just getting better and better. What was Peter like as a coach generally to work with? Because I know he's he's a veteran himself, but he's kind of sometimes got a spicy reputation, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, the thing with Peter was that uh, I I didn't really feel like he was a very structured coach. You know, I felt like. Back then, he was kind of like chill, you know, kind of like a friend uh, almost. And uh, I didn't feel like he like was the tactical genius, maybe, but he was more of like a hype man, you know. He was that friend that was like hyping, hyping us up and making us perform better in that sense. But he wasn't that, uh, you know, like coming up with the new strategies and stuff like that. Right. And was it the case when you joined the team? Because one thing, I don't want to get into this whole drama, but I'll reference it to ask you this question. Famously at that event, because I actually know Get Right and friends with him and I've known people like Peter, the, essentially NIP miscommunicated the story of Get Right retiring, right? And he actually had never said at this point he was going to retire. And so unfortunately, if you remember this, at that event, it became like everyone thought it was his last event. And it became like the farewell tour, like every single, all the commentators the whole time, even on stage when he lost, there was all like... Come on, will you come back for one more year? And he, and by the way, I actually know he didn't even plan on retiring. So it was actually annoying the fuck out of him. I know see, if you ever go back and watch that interview, guys, he's like mad tilted when they ask him this, right? Yeah. But what I want to ask is this, though. Was there like a weird dynamic? Because I believe at the time the rumor was something like that he was actually going to leave NIP, though, which is why maybe it got miscommunicated that he was retiring to look like he wasn't just leaving the team, you know. Was it already sort of known like they're going to go potentially out of the lineup and this is the last? Like, did you know when he came into it, like this might not be the lineup? Were you thinking this is just a lineup going forward? What was your take? I think the thing uh, the thing that was weird about this whole like lineup uh, is when I joined the team I got told that Get Right was going to uh, leave or get benched or something like that after the major uh but th that's like all they said that uh, he was right. basically going to be gone after the major right but then after the major we they uh, we still play with him for like four or five more tournaments and uh, like I obviously I I wasn't complaining cuz I wanted to play with him uh but like it, it was just kind of weird that they they said that he was gonna be gone, but then he wasn't gone, and then uh, like everyone just pretended like nothing happened. 
they just like because I was like confused. I was like, okay, so we're we playing with him now, or or what's happening? And uh, so I think uh, like at Cologne, I think we were like we knew that he was still gonna play, but uh, I heard that he wasn't gonna play after the majors. So I was still kind of confused about the whole situation, and honestly, I don't know what happened. And then after one tournament, he was just gone. So it was just kind of all weird. Like they're like, yeah, okay, you're gonna replace Dennis, and then Get Right is gonna leave after the major, and then he didn't leave. And then we're still playing, and we're kind of in that weird limbo where, like, we don't really know what lineup is going to be, and uh, it was just kind of kind of weird. Also, at this Cologne tournament, again, you get thrown in a land of massive land. So Cologne, you got to play against Zebu and Simple in the first tournament. Like, what's what's that like? Is it wild? It was wild. I mean, at that point, I do, I, I had played against Saiwu uh, before, like uh, in my previous teams when he before he joined Vitality. Oh right, when he was play, against all thirty. Yeah, whatever. right. Okay. Yeah, we played right. uh, we played in some of those online leagues against each other. Was he insane back then? By the way, he was insane, and everyone thought he was cheating. Of course. And, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you had those thoughts. You're like, Wait, who is this? And no yeah. one knows anything, and he's like so insane. Like he drops like seventy kills in two maps, and like who does that? And so everyone thought he was cheating. I, I probably I thought it too. I don't remember, but <laughs> sure. uh, you know, you know, you never know until someone's sure. guilty. But uh, I think the the thing that was most scary was playing against simple. But not only playing against simple, but playing against simple in the arena quarterfinals, the first match. Then you you could feel the the presence, I guess you could say, you know, and. Uh, well, I think it was still it was still a great experience. We I don't think we were close to winning, but it was still it was still fun. Sure. Uh, and the the arena was like sharing for us too. I think like yeah, yeah. NMP was very big back then, you know. So yes. they still are, but maybe not even fans. Uh, but you know, so that was that was really fun, and uh, that's what I that's when I knew like I want to like we winning is fun and playing in arenas is hell of fun. That was my first experience in a real arena, so I wanted to do that every time. I feel like people have a really bad memory for this particular era of NIP because what they don't remember is it was later when the lineup changed and the legends went out and you made the new line and then it went online that things started to get a bit more dodgy in terms of results. The early results are good. Like right after this, you went to Malmo and you were in the stadium there. You were in like the yeah. Swedish home crowd and on that one. Like the, your first two events out, you're getting like the full pro experience, it feels like, right? What was that like to play in front of all the crowd in Sweden? And play? And by the way, the legends of Fnatic, like it's even the derby yeah. match. It sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we were pretty con like we were always consistently getting into playoffs uh, and the tournaments we played. And uh, like, I have a funny story or not funny, but like, I have a good story about uh, Malmo. And uh, it was like I did it in a in a Swedish interview as well. But I basically in 2016 I was there in the arena as a fan with my NAP hat on. Oh, and, when they uh, won, was, right? Oh, yeah, right. and watching them win. Right. And then three years later, I'm playing in the team in NIP, in the arena, so, you know, that was kind of like a, a powerful moment for me, if you if you can say so, because like three years ago, I dreamt of being here and now three three years later, I'm actually in the arena, in the team that I was sharing on. So that was kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, playing against Fnatic, we, we had a good chance of winning. I think we went onto the third map and uh, we could have, I think we could have won, but we lost against the the team that won the whole tournament. So I guess it's not that bad in the end, you know, they, they had a good run and they were a really strong team at that point. So, yeah, I mean, it was really fun. And then uh, you had another, like, playoff run when you went to that Star Series in Turkey, if people remember the one towards the end of 2019. And at this one, you actually beat Evil Geniuses, who I think were ranked, like, number two in the world at Siam or something. That's when they just won that New York tournament. They were a top, top team. What was it like to play against these guys and, and beat them? Yeah, uh, it was funny because, the, like, the... the First time we played, we played against them two times that tournament. Yes. But the the first time we played against them, they had like insane uh, win streak on, I think it was Dust 2. They had like 10 0 or something. Right. And Inferno had like 12 0. And then we won uh, those two maps against them. So we broke their win record on both of those maps. And they, as you said, they had really good momentum. But also, they were, they were a very hype team. Like they were screaming a lot, you know? And uh, that kind of fired us up because they were screaming so much. And then when we won, we also started screaming okay. so much. And so like it kind of like fired us up because they were screaming so much. And then like we won a full eco, I remember, and like Pita is screaming, "Oh, do you guys also have full eco?" You know, just like stuff like that. It was kind of funny, and it uh, kind of boosted our momentum. And then we won against them, and we won against some other team too. Uh, and then we qualified for players, and then we kind of choked there. Uh, it was just kind of unfortunate. I thought we would go further, but. Uh, yeah, I always felt like we were, were like we were consistently getting into playoffs, but we were missing something in the in the playoffs, you know. 
if you had to explain to someone, because I feel like this is why if, if a fan's listening to this interview and they don't understand this concept, the reason why I am Katowice this year, the talk wasn't, look how amazing Donk was. It was like, wait till he gets to the stage and then on the stage, wait for the finals. It's because almost every single player who goes to the big stage doesn't play as well. You don't play like the same game you'd play in an FPL or a scrim. Explain to me why. What What's different about when you go onto the stage as opposed to just a tournament area game? Still the same game in theory, so what's different? Yeah, I mean, it's the same game, but it's just the presence of when you enter the arena, you can feel the aura, the, the aura is like a difference. The, you can feel that there's so many people, like there's people screaming constantly. You hear them when you're playing in-game, you hear it through each other's mics, like uh, whenever you're trying to have like a like a clutch situation and people are like screaming like, oh, 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 and then someone tries to come behind your knife, they're also screaming, you know? So everything in that sense is different because you know you're, like there's a bunch of people in front of you watching. And uh, I think it, like, it fires up some people. Some people can maybe shit themselves, but I think it also benefits a lot of people like Dong probably. Like he probably loves playing in arenas, playing in front of people. Like I would also love it if I could drop 170 rating in front of people. And like, <laughs> they would, like, if you, like if you say you get a triple kill every round, they're going to be screaming like your name. That's like the dream, I would say. Like when I was playing in arenas, I constantly wanted to get like highlights and stuff because just hearing people like uh, screaming my name or screaming for us when we win rounds that would be like the the coolest part so i think it goes both ways like it could all benefit people i think it definitely benefits don because he like getting that energy he has he will just play better and uh but at the same time like the first time i played in cologne i i kind of shit the bed because you know I, I wasn't used to that so it goes both ways and then you had a blast, which people right, remember NIP got to the final of. It was really close. But first, I want to just ask this. So if you remember the old blast format famously was the final was the best of three, but then you play those best of ones against the other teams. Dude, you got to beat Astralis and Team Liquid. They were like the best teams of the year. What was this like? Yeah, like I, I feel like we always like we we played against EG one against them. They were like number two. We played against Astralis. They're number one. I feel like we always play better versus better teams. Right. Uh, I felt like that's where the experience of you know Get Red and Forest came in because they were like so good and calm in that environment, and uh, so that helped us a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean we obviously it was just the best of one, but we still beat them. And uh, the format I wouldn't say <laughs> it was that good. The old blast format it was sure. kind of. It's kind of easy to get to a final by just playing three best of ones yes. or whatever it was. Like I think we won three or four maybe, and then uh, we're in the final all of a sudden. Uh, but uh, yeah, the tournament was uh, the tournament was really nice. Playing and winning against the Charles and Liquid was very good for our momentum, and then we get to play Phase in the final and we choked, uh, which is kind of sad. The problem but. is, if if he, if someone even just looks at the scoreboard, they're immediately going to ask this question, Plopsky. The game itself was super close. It was totally plausible Nip could win, but you had a really bad game. You had a really bad yeah. game, mate. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what happened. I, the only thing I remember is we, we were playing Nuke. It was our pick, I'm pretty sure. And we were up like 14-7. And then we lost. Right. And at 14-7, I, I was playing good at 14-7. But then we lost like nine runs in a row, and those were nine runs in a row where I didn't get a single kill. Oh, right. So that's where it just kind of went to shit. And then we lost that game. Like we had that game in our hands, and I knew they they picked us too. And I knew we weren't that good on those two back then. So I kind of knew that. I wouldn't say I know that we were gonna like uh, lose, but I know that our chances were kind of slim because they were good on those two. We were not so good. And Inferno was the last map, and I know we we're good on Inferno. Like Inferno was one of our better maps. So I feel I think that. It's easy to say now, but I think that I, I, if we won Nuke, then I think we could have had a if good chance got to of winning the, the tournament. Her, right. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole thing. But we lost Nuke, and then I, like, yeah, as I said, I, 10 rounds in a row or something, I didn't get a kill, and then I had really shit <laughs> confidence going into the second map. And I know Dust2 wasn't a good map for me individually either. I've never really liked Dust2. So it was kind of just uh, an unfortunate. Uh, turn of events but the games before that I, I think I I played well and especially against Astralis I was really happy that we won against Astralis I think I think actually a funny thing is that uh, during the COVID era uh, we played against Astralis many times and uh, I think it was HLTV that posted a uh, play the best players against Astralis and I was the best player uh, okay. versus Astralis yeah <laughs> so that was a, a funny thing because uh, I was like their kryptonite I guess I always played good versions of them. 
the one thing I would say about this tournament is, again, if people remember earlier, if you go in, like, look, I know, obviously, I agree, the, the group stage format, like, you can, a lot of people can win BO ones, even though, to be fair, these are the best teams in the world. At the same time, though, two things. One, a final's a final. It's a big deal to play in a final. And then secondly, if people think, this is still the same year where at the beginning of the year, he can't even get through the fucking BYOC to a land in Denmark. Now he's, like, the blast finals, like, the Royal Arena, like, that must be pretty cool. The glow up in your career was crazy this year. Yeah, I was. I mean, it was definitely a big, uh, like, a skyrocket in my career. Like, as you said, I failed to qualify for a Bayok, and then some months later, I'm playing in Cologne Arena, Blast Royal Arena, and yeah, it was a big jump. But uh, I think I think it was hella nice, and uh, it was really nice that I had my parents supporting all of this. Like, uh, you know, being because I dropped out of uh, high school to join NMP. It was basically like stay in high school or join NMP, and I chose to continue continue with my dream. So it was very nice to have their support and they were like watching all of my matches and they were like in the arenas and watching. Uh, so I think that also like helped a lot and boosted my morale and my uh, my confidence, if you can say so. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. And I don't think, I mean, now it's a little bit maybe more common because like you could say kind of the same thing about like Donk, you know, it's like he was playing in the academy team and then all of a sudden he won academies and has the best rating ever <laughs> in the whole tournament. And uh, well, I'm not, I, I wasn't quite at that level, but it was still at that time. It was kind of like a, a similar thing, except I didn't win. Sure. And then if people remember the year ended, because this is what Blast World Finals used to be like, even back then you had to go to the Middle East for the tournament. But the cool thing was you got revenge on face. Were you guys thinking that? Like, we have to beat them because you have the first round matchup against them, right? Perfect chance yeah. for revenge. It was It was a really good... Uh, it was a perfect chance because we played against them in a the group stage. I think they're a much better playoffs team than they are a group stage team because they have so much more experience in playoffs and I feel like they just kind of evolve into a different team. So it was a really good, uh, good opportunity for us to get the revenge. And I also think Forrest played... Like one of the best tournaments, uh, the best. Yeah, uh, it was like a rollback too. tournament, flashback yeah, he, tournament. Sure. He really, he really played really well, and uh, oh, I, that was also his last tournament with us. I, I think. think. So. Uh, like after that, he told us that he was gonna leave. So, um, so it was kind of sad that we couldn't go further. I don't, I don't think we did that well that tournament, except that winning against Face. I'm, I don't. Remember Just came exactly third. What. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think after that tournament, you know, I. It kind of hurt a little bit that he left because uh, it was really one of those players I looked up to the most. And, you know, being able to play with him was so nice. And then he was leaving, so it kind of felt uh, sad. Right. One thing I would ask you, since now we're going to talk about the team that wasn't with those legendary players, is those players are people where I know now people know their personality a bit on camera. And obviously they've even streamed since then. So now they're not as mysterious. But I actually think some of their personality within teams wasn't as well known by fans. Like, for example, like the funny thing is, Get Right's the one who on camera would be like the super charming guy. Very, but I can tell you what, from behind the scenes, he's an insanely driven guy. He's the guy who's like killing himself in practice. He really cares about all the spots. He knows all the demos of the other bloody team. And then if, for Forrest, people might think, actually, he just seems like, you know, quite chill, very quiet. I've heard inside teams, if he thinks like it's like a the opponent's beating us is bullshit or we should have won against it. I, can't, I don't know. He can get angry, mate. He can get fired up. Who are the, What were these guys like to actually play with? Yeah, I mean, as you said, like, uh, get right, me and Get Right, we were, uh, I think it, the thing with Get Right was that uh, he kind of did like his own thing after tournaments and uh, players because I feel like he was kind of like a little bit all over the place because he knew everyone right like he he wanted he you know that he likes to talk with uh, very, people very social and guy he, yeah yeah very social guy and so he was uh, out talking with a lot of people and you know doing his own thing kind of so I didn't get to know him that well like as person uh, but as teammate uh, we, were, we were good friends and uh, I think uh, it was more of like me and Forrest got to know each other better because me and Forrest and uh, the other guys, obviously Forrest also stayed a little bit longer in the team, but we played uh, not like not only say, CS, but after like practice and stuff like that, we played like different games with each other oh, okay. and get to know each other on that level too. And uh, I, I never really did that with Get Right that much. I I went with him sometimes when he like went to bars and stuff just to talk with people and, you know, because I wanted to get to know him too. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, I only have great things to say about both of them. But I think I got to know Forrest a little bit better because I played more with Forrest. And uh, I think to this day, I, like when I got benched in NIP, I uh, 
I even like reset my schedule to wake up early to stream with him like almost every day for oh, a right. certain certain period, and he he always seems so like happy to be playing with me, and that's something I had never thought when I was younger. Like I never thought I would be good friends with Forrest, you know, when I was young. Like sure. that was the guy I was looking up to, and now like I'm actually friends with him. You know, I could I could write to him like, hey, you want to play? Maybe he's not gonna say yes, but you know, there's a chance he could say yes, and like I never thought that would be possible. So I know the stories, but I'll ask anyway, because people who are fans will want me to ask this. So there's a famous thing about Forrest, which is, he even did that joke, I think he used to have it in his Twitter bio, like, you know, I'm just a fucking talented gamer or something, a genius gamer or something. Because it's true, if he plays any other game, Dota, Bloody Quake, he's good at all of them, right? He's just a good player. Yeah, he's he's really good, and he, he has that, like... Uh... He's kind of different thinking the, than I was. Like when I joined the team, and you know, like maybe I would get like uh, two kills and I would like maybe fall back or something. But he, you know, he knew when to like fall back and he knew when to push. Uh, and like he he knew like just he was just so confident in himself and uh, like he he always just did what he wanted to do himself and it always just like worked out. Like I remember like some like we were playing Dust Two and we we're T side and we're up short and uh, like we don't have any nades and i'm like okay guys we don't have any nades what are we gonna do and then for is like okay we just go kill them and then it just goes up and like one tap two people i'm like okay yeah you can just do that too you know and he always like did those kind of crazy things and uh, that's like what i think makes him one of the best players like he really believes in his abilities and he is good in like every game he touches that shooting games like fps games and you can see that now when he's streaming as well. Uh, like, what is he now? Like 33, 34? He's up there. Hope, hope is not the uh, old. <laughs> hope I didn't say that wrong. Sure. <laughs> but uh, he's he's really good still. You know, like he's played. Uh, he's played like half my life, but still. When you came the next year and they made the lineup we referred to earlier of all the youngsters, basically, except Rez, the joke is even he's still pretty young back then, like all the, the yeah. young NIP, the new branded one. But obviously part of the problem was it was only a couple of lands and then the whole world went on the internet and we had to sit on the internet for a year or whatever. When it went back to the internet, were you one of the people who could handle it? Because I always remember in that circuit, it was actually a similar story to the last live, almost with this one. Like the NIP team would always look like it was starting to cook and it would start to get going up and you'd win a few group stage games, you get up there, but it never quite could go through and, and make the run and go deep. So we were one of the guys who could handle online play and a lot of the veterans, it kind of threw them off and kind of demoralized them, you know? Yeah, I think I could handle myself because uh, like being able to just sit inside and play video games every day and like the whole day was what I was doing before the COVID right. came anyway. So it was just right. kind of doing the same thing, but maybe just a little bit less outside. So for me, it was not really that big of a deal. Uh, I think I even started playing better uh covid maybe i'm an onliner but uh you know I, I started playing better and it was also around that time the sg was super op and i was really good with that weapon. right so i think it was also yeah we we just got knock in right in during the covid yes. era so yeah like that whole story was a little bit weird too is like i really want to play with knock but putting him in lurker positions was kind of weird because he's such a talented author and even though i feel like it kind of worked out uh, for us like we always came to playoffs, but we kind of choked in playoffs, you know. So it was kind of the same story. I feel like that's been like my whole career in NIP. Okay. Like we always came to playoffs, but we never sure. really won anything except when device came. But uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, I think uh, I handled it well. And I think I even started to play better and evolving again. Right, Hampers told a pretty good version, but what was yours? What was it like the day when you just come online or you go to the office and then they go, oh, by the way, we've signed a device. That sounds like an April Fool's joke, mate. You know what I mean? And not least he's pretty Danish. Like, what? Like... It was the, the exact same story that Hampus said is actually like what happened. And I'm like, I'm not exaggerating or anything. It was literally me, Hampus, knock. We're in TeamSpeak. Like, it, it was what, like what he said. We were supposed to have a meeting and they like pushed it forward some days. And then the day we're going to have that meeting, uh, me, knock and Hampus are just in TeamSpeak chilling. And then knock's like, yeah, like, uh, Jonas is calling me. And then... He comes back after the Jonas call and he's like, oh, you're playing with device and then he leaves. <laughs> you know, and me and Hampus, like, we're in disbelief. We can't believe what happened. Like, are we going to play with device? Is this some kind of sick joke, joke or what, what's happening? I don't know. We have a meeting one hour later and there's, oh, there's device. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, but, uh, I mean, I feel, I feel, felt bad for Nock, but at the same time, it's like, you can't really do much. Like, if NAP were to come up to me and say, oh, yeah, you're benched, we signed Nico. It's like, what to do, man? Sure. 
So one thing I wanted to ask was, I asked it and the other one, but I'll ask it a different way. The reason why I actually kind of knew when that vlog came out that got Device in trouble, because I, I know him, I know he wasn't actually trying to like trash Astral stuff. I actually got the vibe there, believe it or not. Like, dude, he actually might believe in this project because I got the vibe instead. He was almost telling you guys sort of like, don't think of me as like some god and you're all plebs and like, it's going to be a shit team. Like, no, like we can all like rise together and like, I know how we can do it. I know how you get to the top. And like, you, what, what, did he get this vibe? Did he did he feel like he, he actually thought this project could work? I think he he definitely thought it could work. Like we had a good structure uh, with Threat coming back as the coach and uh, like all those like behind the scenes, except Jonas. But like everything else was like really good, you know. Like we had a good structure, and uh, I think that like I believe all like some of it he said, but he also told me like afterwards that. Maybe it was like it's uh, exaggerating a little bit because he wanted us to feel better, you know. Like when he said that uh, thing about we're five steps ahead, sure, I don't think he meant that, but he just he wanted to say that because he wanted us to believe in it too, you know, more, right. and that he was fully on board with everything and uh, making us feel better about it. That's what uh, I kind of heard afterwards. So I, uh, yeah, and then it became kind of a shitstorm, and I know he felt really bad of afterwards about uh, all of that, but uh, in the end, like. I don't think we were five steps ahead of Astralis, but he wanted sure, us to feel sure. better, you know, because Astralis won majors. We, yeah, we, came know, to play, exactly. we, we came to playoffs. That's what we did. <laughs> True. It was obviously very quickly after this, even though we were still online, you did that flashpoint run where you got all the way to the finals. So like it was working. What was it like very, uh, what was it like immediately with Device? How did he fit in? Because if people don't know, I mean, they know this part now by inference. He had a Swedish girlfriend. He's had a number of them, actually. And he can speak Swedish, right? He's actually not one of those Danes that's just like, like, what the fuck is he saying? Like, he can speak Swedish. It's understandable, right? Yeah, no, he he can speak fluently. I, I didn't think uh, so before uh, I met him. Like, I knew he could speak Swedish, but, like, he, he sounds like a Swede, you know, when you talk to him. So that was kind of surprising. And, uh, yeah, he spoke really well. And, uh, like, when he came into the team... I think he was one of the players that taught me the most uh, because, you know, his experience at that level, being able to win so many majors and finals and all of that, he, he kind of showed me how to think in a different way. Even though I wasn't in my best period individually, uh, we did really well as a team. And uh, yeah, we had that run in Flashpoint where we came second. We lost to Mouse, I think. Yeah. But it was three maps, so we could have won that too. If and then after that, we played the uh, I Am Fall, I think it was, the that, second that, that, yeah. thing. Yeah, and then we, we won that. So, like, yeah. we had a good run. And uh, even the tournament where he the tournament he left, we yeah. got second place as well. Yep. So, we had, we had the, like, that was the real taste uh, yes. of victory that we got those tournaments. Because we felt like we could have won all of those tournaments. One quick question about Flashpoint. I'm not going to ask about the specific 40% packet loss. Actually, that story from Mappus is hilarious, that the internet connection, because it's Swedish, was too good, and it made the face its server think it would be DDoS. Like, that's a hilarious story. What I would ask you is this. You're still pretty young in your career. You're a pretty reserved guy. Before, when you play with Legends, I'm sure some people hate on you if you do badly in a game, but that must have been one of your first experiences of what it's like to be like in the center of the whirlwind of like everyone hating on you on the internet, like every fucking tweet and message. Like, like Those two days must have been crazy. Crazy, mate. Like it was like, for, like you were the most hated people in Counter Strike for two days, right? It was, it was really crazy. Like it wasn't like only on, like sure, we were all talking together and we were like, we were on the same page, kind of. Uh, I mean, the the most funny part, or not funny maybe, but the most yeah, funny part is that we we got a replay of the match, right? And then we almost lost the match. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you know, imagine if we lost that match. That sure. would have been sure. a very much hit storm. Uh, but yeah, obviously, like, to this day, people say, right, 40% loss, like, when they see me in game and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, now I just think it's funny. But back then, I was quite young, you know, and uh, it kind of... It wasn't that nice, but I think it was nice to having having device in the team because he kind of knew how to handle. <coughs> I don't think he handled that much hate to that level, but he knew how to handle it better. And uh, you know, he helped us all through like all of this stuff. And mostly, all of the people were hating on him because he was the one that made it like publicly. Sure. You know, like he was the one writing all of the stuff. He was like speaking for us. So I feel kind of bad for him because people shouldn't have hated all on him, but. He also spoke for us, so that's why I think everyone was just hating on him because he was the one saying it. But it was basically all of us uh, saying the same thing. Um, if we if we deserved a replay or not, I don't know. But uh, the whole situation sucked, you know. Like we played with loss, and that's the that's the true story. We we lagged, and 
that was it, you know. Even though when you guys won the RMR, which was actually the one that IAM fall, it wasn't like a traditional RMR now with the Swiss system and you just go three zero. It's actually like a tournament. I'd like because it's receding as well and points and stuff. So it actually had a playoff bracket. But famously, everyone was hating at the time because it was like it's just a Swedish hotel tournament. There's like because it was everyone's just in the same rooms playing the games, etc. Right? When you had this run, people will forget you guys beat Vitality. Yeah, you I beat mean, Vitality. That's pretty good. The thing is that. Uh... We knew we were good. We because we just came second in the in the flashpoint, right? And then we maybe there's like a tournament in between. But then we go into the uh, I am fall and yeah, we win all like everything. But the, the only thing we knew is that uh, there there is no C CIS teams, right? So we know that yes. uh, Navi is. I think Navi at that point was the best team in the world, and we knew that they were like the strongest team because we we beat Vitality, we beat G2 in flashpoint. So we know right. that we like could beat those teams. Um, so it was just like uh, we felt really good, and I think we became second uh, rank in the world, something like that. And uh, you know, and then we're going into the major in Stockholm, so we like we felt like we had a really good chance because it was Swedish home soil and everything. And we even started out really great in the tournament. I think we went two zero the first day, and then we got because uh, pretty hard draws. Play, got the, then the we got to teams. play versus the CIS teams. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah, <laughs> we played versus uh, Gambit first, I think, or maybe it was Navi. But we played Gambit and Navi the next two games. We lost both, uh, and then we got to play Copenhagen Flames in the third or the right. deciding game. And uh, we well, we almost choked. We had like a 49 lead on the last map. Uh, we got to overtime, but we won overtime, which was good. But uh, I could feel the pressure at that point, and. Uh, I think also, or I know also, Ellen said felt the pressure because he was also like new to the team and young, you know. Um, and then we got to play G2 on stage and we kind of just fumbled and choked there, which was very sad because I felt like we had a really good chance to win the major. It was, I think it was just like, we knew that, I think we were just thinking that Navi was the best team, uh, but all, yeah. the, all of the other teams we could beat, you know. By the way, when you played against this Navi, this was obviously the one people will remember. I mean, as tragic reasons as to why I had to break up. But this team famously only lost one land series. I think they won something mental, mate. Like, I don't know, I'm going to say like, I don't know, 15 series and lost one or 20 and lost one. They were like bonkers. Everyone knows they won this major without dropping a map. And then at the time, like Simple was doing like the record breaking stats almost, you know, like, what was this team? Like, it feels like this team's impossible to beat. Uh, yeah, I mean, Navi was definitely our... Uh, Navi has always been kind of my... The team that I can't beat, like I think during my whole period in NIP, and that was that's like almost four years. I think I beat Navi two times max, maybe. I know I remember one time, but I feel like there was one more time, but I'm not quite sure. But like I I almost never beat them, and that one time I beat them was during the COVID era, you know. So I never right. I don't think I ever beat them on LAN. So I always felt like uh, we had a, we struggled against Simple and. Uh, you know, they had a really stacked, simple, electronic, you know, boomers, all of them. Like, they were a really good team. And we, we always struggled against them. I don't really know why, but that was that was just our kryptonite. But in that pl playoff match, there's two components I want to ask about. One is, there must also be pressure to play a major playoff game in Sweden, in fucking Stockholm. Like, that is Swedish Counter-Strike. And then the other thing is, you also were playing, like, I think that's like peak Nico, mate. Like, that Nico was fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think we we, st we started on our map pick Inferno, and like after like I don't know five six rounds he had already like fifty. <laughs> yes, so. exactly. So you he was on the really, banana you know, killing everyone, right? Yeah, he was he was really fucking us up, and uh, yeah, you could feel it. But at the same time, I, I also felt like uh, like I I didn't play that well that tournament, but I think during that match, I, I think that was like my best map also, and we like I think the half was twelve three. Uh, and we were like almost comebacking when we switched over to CT side. Uh, we got some rounds in a row, and uh, I feel like if we just like if we just had a little bit better T side, then we we could have actually won our map pick and could have been a different story. But yeah, he was he was on a different level, and uh, I guess Nico just wanted to win more than us. In this esports world, it can seem like everyone's against you, but I've always got the Skrilluminati, my Patreon community, riding with me. And it is thanks to the support of the following people, this video and all of them on my channel are made possible. Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Ahmed Haju, Frisky, Tosh, Jensen Gore, Animosity, Toucan, Tobias Berners-Gorney, 
If you've ever watched my videos, you know now I'm going to give a massive shout out to Jerky's Minion, the main man. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? You want teasers? Find out who the upcoming interview guests are. Maybe you want to ask me a question. I tend to answer them at length in my video AMA. Do you want to take part in one of those donated discussions where we talk about what you're interested in esports? Well, if any of these perks or more appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Skulluminati today. Where? In the description box below is a Patreon link.